Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! The other big change is that the brown M&M has, quote, transitioned from high stilettos to lower block heels. Also less sexy. That's progress. M&Ms will not be satisfied until every last cartoon character is deeply unappealing and totally androgynous. Until the moment you wouldn't want to have a drink with any one of them. That's the goal. When you're totally turned off, we've achieved equity. They've won. John's in Formby. John, what would you like to say? Yes, uh, I think a lot of the uh, Red Wall situation was to do with uh, keeping Corbyn out. Do you? Oh, absolutely, yes. Uh, I think in a lot of elections, it, it's not a question of who's a great candidate. It's a, it's a question of who's the lesser of two evils. And, and Corbyn's ability to alienate huge swathes of traditionally Labour voting populations was legendary. Yes. Well, uh, I think there's another factor which isn't discussed enough, but which I know a lot about living in the North. Yes. Is, is uh, the, the hatred of the political correctness which is forced down people's throats. <laughs> give me your best example, John. Well, uh, I, I could give you loads. Yeah, go on, then. Just uh, give me your best. Is, uh, give me your best. A, a school trip from yes. um, a, um, a school in Bradford to the Slavery Museum in Liverpool. Yes. And uh, the white pupils who wanted to go were not allowed to go. See, I'm 99% certain that's not true. <laughs> well, I'm afraid you, if you like your um, bigotry, get the better of you. No, no, 99%. I've spoken to several of these pupils. OK. Um, what was the school called? I can name it. Yes, go on. Yeah, it was but Buttershaw, and the, the headmistress was uh, Mrs Hedge. And you voted in the general election because of a school trip from a school in Bradford? In part, yes. OK. Should we say that again out loud? You, you cast your vote in the general election because of a story about a school trip from a school in Bradford. Wh oh, which, there, are, there, are, there are many others. Which there politician, many others. Which politician uh, do you think was, um, was most uh, responsible uh, for that? To, to ban bacon from a, a, a multicultural day centre. Yes, and, and well, I suppose I, I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt and, and genuinely believe that a plan to ban bacon from a multicultural day centre that you don't attend influenced your voting decisions? Yes, it would. Yeah, no, I, I mean, clearly. It, Just no, tell well, me why. Well, 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 what, yes, what, well, why? I, I mean, because... I don't like it. No, but but if, you, if, it. if you went there, and we're talking about tyranny in the context of bacon now, John, so I'll just give you a moment to reflect upon the ridiculousness of that. But if you went to the day centre and you were being deprived of bacon, I could almost understand how that might influence your choice of MP in a general election. But you don't go to the day centre. Was it? Did you even live in the relevant constituency? Uh, no. Uh, so miles so away, they stop again, serving bacon friends. in a day centre you never visit, in a constituency you don't live in, and that influenced your choice of MP in a general election. I am my brother's keeper, and um, I don't approve well, I'm not, of... Well, I'm not interested in your brother, I'm, in I'm, Rock, I'm interested Rock, in you. Rotherham and half a hundred other places either. And which national MPs bear responsibility for that? They, they, they all do. Who, all who, all uh, of them? So Conservative, all Labour, all Liberal, them. Democrat, all of them? Uh, all those who knew it was going on and did nothing about it... Well, that's, that's, that's libelous, isn't it? Because that would entail actual conscious knowledge of something and looking the other way. So everything you've said in answer to the question of why did people vote for Boris Johnson falls apart at that little point where I say the words Boris Johnson. No, it doesn't. It does? <laughs> so you voted for Boris Johnson because they stopped serving bacon in a community centre you've never visited in a constituency you don't live in? Well, 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 well uh, an area which someone said on the media that you should uh, visit and live in and find out how re things really are, because in your London bubble you haven't a clue. But, mate, you don't live in the constituency. You're in a bacon bubble. I, 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 I You're in a bacon bubble. In, in, in and for the record, John, for, for, for the record, uh, mate, I was right. born in Doncaster. Uh, here's another one. <laughs> Use of the public library. Yes. Uh, it, uh, at Farsley, it has a toilet. Yes. Um, if if you are a man, is this real? 
I want to use the toilet, you you are made to feel very, very uncomfortable, where where women are let in without uh, let or hindrance. Right. How do they make you... It's it's all part of the rotten culture that is imposed upon us. How do they make you feel uncomfortable? How do they make you feel uncomfortable when you go to the lavatory? How do they make you feel uncomfortable? Uh, and, and John, please. You just don't understand how, he- how wrong it is and how I, hated it is. John, I understand perfectly. I can, I, look at these stories and find out that a lot of them are true. John, I've written a book about these stories, but I'm more interested in what makes you feel uncomfortable at the lavatory in Farsley Library. Well, if I, if I read the literature... Of no, the no, Farsley oh, please Library, don't tell me you haven't. You've been to the lavatory in Farsley Library. There is an accessible toilet. You've been there, uh, though. And when I go yes. to use it... yes. I am told it is only for emergencies. Yes. Uh, but they'll let me use it uh, just as a one-off. And then a woman comes up 20 minutes later, can I use the toilet? Yes. Because you can love. So your choice of political party in the last general election is influenced by the accessibility of the lavatory in Farsley Library, the uh, availability, yes, of, uh, uh, the availability of bacon, the, av- the availability of bacon in a community centre you've never visited, and an almost certainly apocryphal story about a school trip from a school in Bradford that you neither attend nor live in the relevant constituency. Have I got that right? Listen, it, it, I have. It's, it's half past ten. Holly Harris is here with the headlines. Miss Adrian is in Clapham. Adrian, what made you pick up the phone? Uh, because I think you're being, um, excuse my uh, use of language, somewhat of a drama queen. Yeah, um, uh, firstly, per- per- firstly, you're misrepresenting the intent of the bill. It's to curb serious disruption, not just disruption. Well, could you define so, that then? Well, I mean, that's for the courts to decide, isn't it? I mean, no, it's not, you see. Uh, You've misunderstood well, the point of the legislation. That's for the Home Secretary to decide. Oh, OK. Oh, well, I'd, I'd, but I'd, carry I'd on lecturing me about what I failed to understand, <laughs> champ. OK, well, uh, well it, 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 in this country we have a parliament that passes the law and then very often what you have is case law that determines what the law means which is why you have uh, did you listen to any of the debate last night did you listen to the lords describing i I, I haven't had a chance to do that yet okay well you you, you've just completely misrepresented all of the concerns expressed in the house of lords yesterday but i'll tell you what's really funny you've done it live on national radio no i haven't listen if you could actually let somebody finish before interrupting them it would actually improve the uh the it, interrupting you pal is an act of charity oh, well anyway you, you uh, start again yeah well if i could just be allowed to finish we have a we have a system of governance in this country where parliament passes the law and then it's for the court now, you've to already said that interpret yep, and, it, and, it, and it's wrong in this case so start again well, and say something that's true well it, if you're saying that the concept of judicial precedent is being set... No, I'm talking about who would have the right to determine when the police get sent in to break up a protest under the Police Crime Sentencing and Courts Bill that was debated in the House of Lords last night. I apologise that I haven't been clear enough, but I think you're the only person listening who hasn't understood what this conversation is about. James, in this country, we have the Human Rights Act, okay, And the Human Rights Act brought into force the European Convention on Human Rights. Article 10, which excludes the right to protest and the right to freedom of expression, is a qualified right. And member states of the Convention have the right to pass laws and to determine what is and what is not acceptable conduct in the expression of your Article 10 rights. No, what this would be in the gift to... of the Home Secretary. That's the ho- Again, I, I really... I mean, I, this might sound a little bit unkind, but you can't really comment on a debate you didn't even read about or listen to. The, so, the, 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 could, so you're saying that all of the contributions from all of the lords, from uh, a former James, director could, of public could, prosecutions down, they have a poorer really grasp no of what was... You constantly talk over people. I'm not talking over you, I'm trying to help you. I'm just no, saying, no. we're talking about what happened in the House of Lords last night, and you've conceded so you haven't got a clue. You no, haven't got a clue what happened in the... But maybe I'm being a drama queen, or, or maybe you are, but you haven't got a clue what happened in the House of Lords last night. I've already explained to you. I haven't listened this, to... This is the not what the bill says. Bill. This is part of what they were complaining that's about. Really, that's I mean, pointless if you don't ever let anyone finish, James. It's oh, go on, pointless. have another go, then. Right. In this country, we have the European Convention of Human Rights. So so the I'm bill will supersede to... that. Yes, I'm aware of that. Right, so why are you talking about the thing that's going to be superseded in defence of the thing that's going to supersede it, pal? Because the case law that is... That, that, that it won't be case law, it's in the gift of the Home Secretary. That. I am going to talk over you, but I promise you it's, it's a favour. It's an act of kindness. Because you're live on national radio um, expressing completely bogus opinions about a debate you have absolutely no knowledge of on an issue you don't understand. 
sense. Are you thinking of running for political office sometime soon? Because I could no, recommend a party. Talk, no, I'm thinking of becoming a disc jockey so I can just talk over people. It's not a disc jockey, mate. Account. That involves playing records. So you can't even get the definition of the well, phrase disc like jockey record, correct. Mate, at times you are a bit like a stuck record when you don't stop and let people talk. So if I could be allowed perhaps one final opportunity to explain... It's 12.58, you're listening to James O'Brien on LBC. Johnson Gold is green. John. Hi, good evening, Tom. The chat that opened up your programme in support of Boris um, was, uh, very, I'm very much in agreement with him, but I don't think he went nearly far enough. Um, I, I will uh, continue to support Boris Johnson no matter what, because I know he's a liar. And um, it's been documented he's a liar since he was about five years old. The women, the wives, the, the children all over the place, the lives... This is no secret. And knowing that, we voted him as mayor twice. We voted him as conservative. The, the conservatives voted him in as their party leader mm. after Theresa May. And we voted him in at the last general election in the full knowledge that he was a liar. OK, why did we do this? Because not only is he a vote winner, because he gets things done. And, you know, just like a tennis game, you can lose a lot of points. You can lose a couple of sets. You can even not win the majority of the points. But if you win the big points, you win the battle and you win the, you win the war. And that's what okay. Boris does. He gets the be he gets the big, the very big decisions right. This is not about I, I, John. I'm not sure that works. If you lose the majority of points in a tennis match, you'll lose the tennis match. Not so. Not so. Because you can you can uh, you can take you can win every service game on to juice. OK, but win the game and then win the other sport you love. Trust me, I'm, I'm right on that, OK? But just, just accept my point. You can win, uh, you can lose a lot of important battles, but if you win the really key points on, on the really key issues, OK, you win the entire war. And that's what Boris does. And that's why the people vote him in. Now, what I don't accept, what I don't accept is the people, and all these people calling him up going, it's terrible, he's a liar, he's got to go. Well, I'm sorry, but you can't blame a person for being the same animal as he was 10 and 20 and 30 years ago. He has not changed one iota. So it's our problem, and there we are trying to actually pin the blame on him for our failings of voting him in. Now, Hang I on, hang on, John, 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 wait a second, hang on. Yes. It's the British public's fault that the Prime Minister's a liar. No, but if the British public voted him in several times into, into either the mayorship or the leadership of the party or the prime minister or the premiership, knowing his history, knowing he's been a liar, right? Then they can't turn around and say, "Hey, he's lying. This is disgraceful." What I would accept, and I entirely accept this, okay, is if the public were to turn around and say. We, we know he's a liar, and we accept he's done certain achievements, OK? But we actually don't feel Brexit's done, and COVID, it's not done. And he's got us through that. <laughs> we, 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 we don't think that we want this kind of person to lead us into the next five or ten years for whatever, it, for, for whatever reason. We need a different kind of leader now, OK? And, and history is littered with that. You know, Churchill won the war for us. And what did we do to reward him in 1946? We booted him out. Well, John, as, as a student of Churchill, Boris Johnson may well get his moment. Um, I, I'm not sure I follow your logic, to be honest with you. And I'm, I think it's very easy and glib to blame people who voted for Johnson for what we've got. But you have to look at the, at the context of their decisions. And it turns out a lot of his colleagues possibly might be voting him out shortly. Just remarkable. Robert's in Leytonstone. Robert. Yeah, good evening, Tom. It's been a long time since we chatted, a long time since I phoned in. It's taken something like this to do it. And um, I think that um, uh, he, the, the MPs that are voting against him at the moment need to actually think of what things are going to be like in a couple of years' time at the next election. The people are not going to be concerned that much about a few drinks in the party. What they're going to be concerned about is all the backstabbing and the leaks that are going on within the government. And they're going to be looking at things like the economy, uh, conditions in, in East Europe and so forth. And that those MPs thinking that they can't win the next election because if Boris Johnson's in, 
I'm afraid they need to think again because I think that they're more likely to lose their job if they put somebody else in. Now, they might not like Boris, but the reality is he's done an awful lot of good in a lot of areas. And this country is doing incredibly well economically, financially, in employment, in all sorts of things, including getting over and through the virus. And, you know, uh, there is nobody else in the government that they've got that could take over from Boris, I don't think. Now, you might not like the guy, but, you know, if, if the economy and if our finances in this country suffer as a consequence of them swapping Boris for somebody else, the reality is all these people phoning in emotionally about their relatives and family, I can fully understand how they feel. Totally and completely understand how they feel. But are they actually thinking about the future? You know, I know that that's happened. It is a past. What you need to do is look at what is better for the future. And the reality is, if our economy or our finances suffer in any way at all, the reality is, Tom, that more people will suffer as a result. They are. I mean, look, at, uh, it's not, I don't think it isn't, that it is the government's fault entirely, but look at the, the cost of energy as it goes up. Yes. You know, yes. people's finances yes. are about to take a hammering, not, and actually, arguably, uh, you know, there's a, a tax increase on national insurance coming in April, which is a government yep. policy. Yep. Yeah, yeah, I agree that there's things there that are, uh, you know, but people understand a lot of that. They've understood about this increase in order to help the NHS. Yeah. So funding. your argument, they Robert, is think, think about more than the parties. Yes, 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 yes. No, but listen, oh. if 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 I know the economy is up at the moment, and I know that finances are like, this is a global thing, though. This isn't just. This is a global thing. It's not, not in the control, necessarily, of the government or people or businesses. It's happening globally. Now, the case is it might not be the best at the moment that the people would like, and, and they're going to suffer a little bit, yes. But the reality is that's still better than what the alternative is if we swap Boris for somebody well, else. What is the alternative? It could be a lot worse. The alternative is is the fact that nobody is perfect, and the number of people that but broke might the be rules. There might COVID. be people, Robert, who have uh, a, a, that the public can trust in more, who have a better understanding of actually how to govern, who have a more concrete understanding of what uh, they need to do in order to be able to do things to help people through difficult times. Do you think? Do you think Boris Johnson has displayed an ability to govern well? I think he's actually actually probably led and been able to get a lot of support that he's getting now because the fact that he's sort of motivated people and got people to do things. And the, which the things reality do you, which is things when you hold... Well, which things? Yeah, hang what on. Things? Hang on. If you look at the fact that what do businesses do? What do team builders do? We have these social events. We have these meetings and thanking people and getting people Robert, together. They weren't allowed, mate. If, I know everyone, they every, if, there are Tom, other people in I this know, country who are very good I at know. motivating people and they care about their teams yeah, deeply yeah, and want yeah. to thank their staff. But are they who in were, government? Are those who were in not, government? No, and they were not allowed no. to go and thank no. their staff in the manner in which Boris Johnson did. Yeah. And his excuse yeah. is that, well, nobody told me that it wasn't allowed. He I set don't like the rules. Excuses. I know, I know, Tom. I know he broke the rules. Possibly he did. And, and, but the reality is, Tom, who is better? And if you don't get somebody who is better, and he might be an honest person, but if that honest person is not anywhere near as good, then why are you putting him in and to destroying the economy and finance, potentially? Yep. There is nobody in there who is better. All right. Robert, you've given it a good go. I appreciate your call. Thanks for picking up the phone again. Uh, Louise is a new caller in Uxbridge, appropriately. Hi, Louise. Hi. Far away. Hello. Far away. Hi, I just want you... Uh... I just wanted to say that some of the stuff that Boris has done, I don't agree with, but some of it I do. Like, he's helped us up with furloughs. He's helped this country out with... He's done it all right with the lockdown, OK? Fair enough, it's a bit slow, but he did, you know, look, in the end, the parties alone I don't agree with. Right. 
but overall, I think he got this country out of trouble when we needed it. And I think that's the moment at which he says, he, or it should be impressed upon him, that he can have that legacy forever. Mm. Well, I personally, as a Prime Minister, I like him. Each to their own, you know. What would, rationally, you think a Conservative MP who's sitting on a small majority might think of asking the country to vote for Boris Johnson as Prime Minister again? Well... I just think with your last caller, some of the stuff he come out with is ridiculous. But alone or out of all of them, I don't like him out of conservative. But I'd say Boris himself is all right in that. I don't know. No one's going to vote for him or not many people are going to vote for him anymore. So what's the point, if you're a Conservative MP, of keeping him in place and going, you know, heading off into the next election, to the early part of the next election with Johnson in charge? What's the point of it? Well, there isn't one, is there? Obviously, the media and what else has made it that he's out. He, at the end of the day, he's going to be out, isn't he? I just don't understand. Well, Louise, saying. I've got to be honest with you. I don't understand why the, the media gets the blame for revealing the fact that Downing Street have been attempting to hide various parties and events that took place during lockdown when they were telling millions of people that they couldn't do those things. Yeah, that I agree with. Right, so the media doing their job and exposing the truth of what actually happened is something you agree with, but it, you disagree yeah. with the fact that the media have... No, they just they just go on and just portray it more into it than more in depth. So they're making more out of the story, they're making it bigger, stuff like that. What, by finding new things out? No, because I think people should know what's going on, just... Right, so how would people how would people know what's going on were it not for the media finding out about it? I, I don't I, 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 I don't know, it's just but sometimes it's too much, it just goes on and on and on. It just Yeah, I know, it's it's ridiculous. I agree. It's, oh, it's, it's ludicrous. It's ludicrous that he was he was ambushed by cake. That the police are now investigating investigating potential criminality in Downing Street and possibly yeah. by the prime minister. I agree, it's ludicrous, and it strikes me that there is one way of getting rid of this ludicrous situation very quickly, and that is to say, thank you very much indeed for getting us the vaccine rollout done so brilliantly. Thank you very much for getting us through uh, that difficult few years and part of the pandemic. Thanks very much. On, off you go. Yeah. But you wanted him to stay. No, but it, I just, I just think that uh, it's hard, isn't it? Because you've got to weigh up, you've got to weigh up the goods and the bad. This, that. I just, at the end of the day, obviously he's going to go. Look, each to their own. I'm just saying, I like him personally as a prime minister, but it's not. Him. What I think and what other people think are two different scenarios. All right. Louise, I appreciate the call. Last word, back to France. Aidan's in, in uh, Olag. Uh, what would you like to Hello. say, Aidan? I, I, I wonder Hello, why James, this is such a European flavour, this conversation, but actually Kieran has kind of reminded us of why it is of, of, of um, such relevance. Um, I, I, I live in Olag, but I'm actually from Dorky in South Kent. I only moved here a short time ago. I'm, I'm in Dorky in June for the book festival, Aidan, so I shall send your love home. OK, well, that's very kind of you. Um, I have to agree fully with my fellow Dubliner. Yeah. Um, it's embarrassing the way the European Union is behaving. What really should happen is this is seen as a fight for democracy. Every yeah. European Union wow. country, and I would also include the UK as an associate of course. Uh, country, should send a contingent of troops to Ukraine and let Vladimir Putin, who is a murderous psychopath, know that he's not just picking a fight with one small European country, he's picking a fight with all of us. I also object very strongly, James, to your equivalency between Donald Trump and Vladimir Putin. Donald oh. Trump, whether you like him or dislike him, and I know that actually most of you guys on the left, or pretend to be on the left, um, def you know, rail against him continuously. Yes. Because he was elected with uh, a, a huge number of people. I mean, 75 yes, million no, I did, people. I did make that point, but, but, but when he lost, he incited a, a, a riot he that was... He, inc he didn't actually, oh, okay. I'm sorry. I've okay. actually watched that speech. Okay. And I've watched it more than once. Well, we shall both follow. We'll both follow the investigation with great interest. But just in conclusion, why is he refusing to hand over all the documents from the White House about what actually happened in the run-up to it? 
Uh, you know as well as I do, James, that sometimes the legalese can actually catch you out without you doing anything wrong. <laughs> so why is he not handing over any of the document? But well, let's just stick with Vladimir Putin. I mean, no, no, let's not. You, you no, made it about me. I'm happy to play. I'm happy to play. It. I'm happy to play it that way around. No, no, James, he murdered people in London using nuclear weapons. Yes, and, you're actually and people and and and, and, Donald and Donald Trump unleashed a mob on the Capitol who had the James actual vice the president in their sights. Sorry, that's not true. Though. Okay, well then we'll have another conversation about why he won't release any of the documents into what happened on the day. Well, I, I say uh, because the legalese might trip him up. Cannot release documents Be because the legalese might trip him up, Aidan. No, no, that's right. It's on the record. It's on. The, I mean, that's, that's, that's your response. You're, 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 this, you're, this is a typical. Of, of, like, you remind me of my best friend. He's a doctor in Brighton. Well, that's a that's a lovely side. compliment, which I will which I will take to the bank. You, you you remind me of one of my best friends as well, Aidan. Um, it's twelve noon. Mark's in Dartford. Mark. Hi, Tom. Um, right, you've set out your stall. Do you mind if I have just three minutes just to explain where I'm coming from? Go. Um, when a government makes legislation, they have to legislate for the masses and they have to legislate for idiots. You have to. When we brought in lockdown, the government brought in lockdown, they had to lock the masses down. They had to lock everyone down and pretty much scare them into their houses to keep them shut down because they didn't know the damage that this pandemic was going to do when it first started. So until they found out what was going on and they could put a plan in place, everyone stayed locked up apart from essential workers. The government still had to function. Yep. OK. Now, when you've got a pandemic, everyone's running around thinking, what the hell is going on here? They're trying to put a plan together. They're trying to keep the economy running. They're trying to keep businesses safe, people yep. safe, the NHS. They have to function. You cannot function under that amount of pressure without blowing off some steam. Let those people have their, their wine, their drinks, their parties. Just blow some steam off and let's keep this ball rolling. Now, I've seen for the last two or three weeks the media do a hatchet job on Boris Johnson. It's trial by media every single day. Well, this is why the police are investigating now, because they see that they have to. Sue Gray wouldn't have been in, um, involved in this if we had just said, Boris, you're an idiot, you're a liar, get on and do what you've got to do. But now it's, it's inevitable that he's going to have to go because the media have pretty much done a hatchet job. And it, it, it's, it's trial by media. Um, OK, we know Boris isn't um, morally as sound as some people could be, but he does win elections, he does get things done. We've still got businesses. We ha uh, you, you imagine if we hadn't have locked down and everyone would have gone out, we would have had half a million people dead or a million people. Mm -hmm. You have to legislate for idiots. You have to lock down the masses so that the, the, the um, essential businesses can function but and Mark, run. Mark, the idiots in your description are now the people who followed the rules because there are lots of people who also had a very, very I'm, difficult and stressful I'm time not saying that they who would like idiots. to have blown off steam. I'm saying the masses. When you make a legislation, you have to legislate for the lowest yes, the denomination law, of understanding. Yes, you're right. The law applies to everyone. Yes. But Including you have to make some allowances. those who make the rules. You have to... No, no, no. Because you cannot lock down the government, tell them to stay in their house, work separately, um, stay at home, and have, have a, a Mark, functioning there were, government. There, there were plenty of organisations and institutions that had to have people go into work. It wasn't just the government. Hospitals had to function by having people come in. Teachers had to go into they school. Stuck to the rules? Do you think every one of them stuck to the rules? Probably I not. Don't but know. do you think that those nurses <laughs> needed to blow off some steam? Do you think that after 12, 15, 16 hours on yep, a ward, of burying people, they had to blow off steam? I think it would have now, been great if they were allowed by the law to have drinks they parties. They did. They did. Boris wasn't allowed, but he took his best judgment and went, look, get in the garden, get a couple of bottles so of wine. So the law doesn't have a apply chat. to everybody. You can pick and choose based on your own individual circumstances. Well, let's go and start investigating nurses policemen and other essential services and see how much muck we can dig up on them. Are we going to run them into the ground? You wouldn't dare. But because it's Boris, the media has done a hatchet job on him because you want to bring down a government because guess what? It's big news. If you found six nurses that had had two or three parties, had their boyfriends round, had a barbecue and done whatever, would you cut them down at the knees? No, you wouldn't. It's the same thing. Boris well, I think Johnson they should still have been judgment. fined by, by the police. You know, if the police have evidence that they did that, then they should have been fi fined well, in the find course of the law. After we've dealt with Boris, let's go and find some nurses, let's go and find some firemen and some policemen and say, right, we've heard two years ago you had a barbecue, we're going to do a hatchet job on you as well. You, you weren't found out, but now we've got evidence. You wouldn't do it because the public would be up in arms about it. 
You know, this is lazy journalism. Uh, I don't like Boris. Listen, I think he's a liar. I think he's morally corrupt. But I don't like the way things are being done now. This is trial by media. He's got no option. And... and uh, personally, I think he made the right decision to say to his people, look, if you want a beer and you want a party, crash out here, let's just keep the ball rolling, let's keep the government going, let's keep people in jobs, let's stop people dying. If they'd have let everyone go out, we could have had half a million dead or more. If they'd have gone, oh, well, we want to stay partying, so we'll let everyone else party. They had so, to legislate for everyone. I, I, yeah, you keep saying that. But you, because it's Mark, true. But Mark, you don't seem to follow through with that idea. Because you say they have to legislate for everyone. Do you accept that the law then applies to everybody? No, it doesn't. Right, well, so, I think but this, is not, this, is, this is not the country that we thought that we lived in. Because when legislators make laws, they have to apply to when everybody. When you've got a virus out there killing people and you don't know how to operate and how to work around this virus, sometimes you bend the rules. You bring a law in and you want the masses to apply, but you still need the people that are keeping the wheels turning to be able to function. And mentally, you wouldn't be able to do it if you were locked And who down. are those people that allow the, the wheels to keep turning? Well, what the about nurses and teachers army? and doctors yes. and the army and the police and the fire yes. service? Have we heard of any nurses that have been taken to court? and charged and hounded by the press? No, we haven't, because we turn a blind eye because they need to function. Once they do 15 hours on so a wall what was the and they point? come out and they're knackered, what? they're allowed to... What's the point? Hang on a second, let me ask the question. What's the point of this law that locked us all down, that told us we couldn't meet people, that I've told us we couldn't have this two or three no, no, times hang on a second. now. What was the point of that law if, by your definition, Mark, people should have chosen whether or not it applied to them. Because you're not, you can't allow the masses to choose. You have to let the people that run the country and keep the country safe to make a choice and function. But the masses need to be kept inside until we work out, right, this virus is a killer, or no, this virus is OK. You had to frighten people indoors to get an immediate lockdown so that you could bring the virus under control, you could contain it. If you just let people go out walking around, kissing each other, we would have had half a million dead. So, so, no, the law doesn't apply to everyone. The law was brought in to encourage people to stay in while the people that matter, that are the, uh, the, the engine of the country, could function. And they, they did, and they could. Lockdown. They, yeah, they didn't lock down, Mark. Then. They went to work. <laughs> they, went into the, they went into the offices. Because they had to. Yes, but so did nurses and teachers and doctors yes. and police officers. So and why you're does not hounding why, them, are you? Why, no, I'm not, it's not on about hounding. Why does the law not apply to them either? It does apply, but if you say... But to how nurses, come it applies no, to them and not to the people that made the, nurses, the law? If you say to the nurses, uh, right, now you're OK, and the police, no, you're OK, and you're OK, before you know it, people will end up bending those you're OKs to... Oh, exactly. Well, I was a nurse. I was a nurse. Uh, Mark, not now, but... Mark, you're arguing against yourself. Can you no, hear I'm it? No, I'm not, Tom. No, I'm not. What I'm saying is you have to legislate for the masses and the occasional little bit here and there needs to still function and you ignore it. You allow it to go on. You don't give them trial by media. Who does the allowing? The Who does the allowing? We do. The government does. The police do. You just ignore it. They got us through it. The country has to function. We have to get paid. We had to have a furlough scheme. That had to be put in Absolutely, place. Absolutely, and you it was. You can't do that while you're under lockdown. The government had to function. I fear we're just going to go round in circles. Mark, we're, not, we're never going to agree. I, I appreciate that you've outlined how you feel about it and your position on it, and that's fine and good, and it's right that we've had the chat about it, but I just, I think, I don't know what it is that you're describing when you think that the law doesn't and shouldn't apply to everybody. Thank you for the call. One of the things the Prime Minister said today in the House of Commons that was basically untrue, and clearly untrue, was his allegation that Keir Starmer was responsible for not prosecuting Jimmy Savile. How, how can you have a Prime Minister just repeating fake news like that? Well, I have no idea of the background of Keir Starmer and I know it's that he... It's not true and the Prime I Minister know. repeated it. It's an old meme that's just repeated by... Well, you know, there were things that Keir Starmer films. said that someone who was the former Director of Public Prosecutions shouldn't have said at the dispatch box. He didn't say anything he that wasn't true. He shouldn't have prejudged what a Met investigation was going to find. He didn't say anything that was untrue. Well, Boris I, Johnson said something that was untrue. He said things he that were inappropriate. the House today. I, I don't believe that was the case. Well, it, it is, what, you're saying that Keir Starmer was responsible for not... I don't know, I don't know the details. Well, that's what the Prime Minister said. Well, I don't, you haven't heard he your word, He shouldn't have said it, should he? Well, I think there are lots of things that Keir Starmer shouldn't have said.
Well, there are clearly things that he said that aren't the true. Prime Minister now, whether, he would, the whether they were deliberate lies or not has yet to be established. But he's clearly said things to the House that were not true. The Prime Minister tells the truth. Jonathan is in Uxbridge, conveniently Boris Johnson's constituency. Hi, Jonathan. Hi, Tom. You're right. Um, basically, I just, I mean, I'm, I'm echoing kind of the sentiments from your from your previous comment. Kind of comment. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, he, yeah, he can't he can't undo what's happened. But you, I mean, you you know what it's like. You worked in Westminster. You know, it, they, these guys are working crazy, crazy days. Um, you know, they're all probably bubbled. They all work together. Um, you know, they if they go out and they, you know, okay, they happen to have a few couple of glasses of wine. I can't see the. I really can't see the issue behind this. And you know, the, 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 for it all to blow up again about a, over a birthday cake. I mean, I, I work in a company. You know, we we we, we supply to, to kind of the, the broadcast industries. We you know we were classified as key workers. We we had a we had a do. We, well, not a do, but we had a we had some pizza when a, when a colleague left. Everybody and people were doing it. And the hypocrisy now of the left wing media to come back and and pinpoint the finger at Boris and his core team. I'm sorry, but I just think it's it's flat out of order. The, the left wing media. It is. It's the left wing media. I mean, you mean like the Sun? They, yeah. Okay, but you know they. Sorry. The, so the left wing media of the Sun. You can't have your birthday cake and eat it, Boris. Is their front page tomorrow? But they they've had to say that because Why? half the country's up in arms about it, and everybody jumped on this bandwagon. You know, I've been speaking to people who are staunch Boris supporters who are completely turned against him now. And, you know, we've well, forgotten well, about what think, he's done in the last two not, years. Jonathan, do you not think there's a reason that they've turned against They haven't just been blindsided by the left-wing media or, um, you know, taken up in a... Uh, in a trance uh, and, and made to hate him by some sort of, you know, hip, hypnosis. They, they oh, understand, yeah, Jonathan, that the reason why this is important is because whether we liked it or not, the rules at the time prevented anybody from doing what you think would have been OK in government because they were working hard. Back, you've got to look back, back, in, back in wartime when Winston Churchill was fighting for this country and he was putting his neck on the line. He was doing things mm -hmm. that wasn't really popular at the time. Mm -hmm. He was doing things that, you know, that in years, got, years on from there, we realised actually, you know, what he did on the, and in the vast, overwhelming uh, majority of cases was, was right. And, you know, he was doing it for the interest of the country. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, I mean, look, you know, you, so you, you've, wor you've worked in, in the yep. heart of government. Yep. You know, these guys, are, you know, how they're probably working... Oh, it's a nightmare. It's, 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 day, it's an you know? all-encompassing, full <laughs> frontal bodily and, and would, assault to, but would to, you agree to do it. That, would, would you agree that, you know, a lot of the decision-making is, you know, it's, it's done in the corridors, isn't it? It's done. Well, it shouldn't be. It's, Absolutely it's, well, it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be done in the corridors. It's not like you wander past a meeting room and you go, right, let's, well, actually, we're going to do that. That's the direction of travel I'm going to take the country. And that would be a terrible way to run a government. Um, and, Jonathan, it doesn't excuse the fact that the people who were in the centre of power, working very hard, uh, up against one of the biggest threats this country has faced since the war, were also morally obliged to follow the rules they set for everybody else, let alone medically. I'm, but it, I like, I like everyone said, it, it's easy in hindsight, isn't it? It's, to, well, to look back. No, 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 it, what, that's the whole point. It was not easy in hindsight. These rules were not easy. They were horrible for everyone who, who had to follow them, who felt duty-bound, either th compelled through the law or compelled morally or medically to follow these absolute nightmare uh, handouts from the government, these laws that were changed to prevent us from seeing our nearest and dearest for months and months, that prevented my children from being able to go to school and many millions like them. They were horrific, absolutely horrific. Nobody should get a free pass on following those laws, especially the people that made them. I, I just, I, I do think, I, mean, I, I think we, I mean, and I, I understand where you're coming from, but I, I think don't we think you do, do with the greatest of respect. I don't think you do. I think if you can, I, if you can come on and say they deserve a break, they deserve to have cake and wine and cheese and biscuits and all the rest of it in a, in the manner in which other people could not do, then I don't think you but, do get it. But I think a lot of this is an excuse to try and get Boris out. That, that since, since Brexit and since when he when he won the last election, there's been an overwhelmingly large percentage of this country that have disliked him and wanted him out from the outset. Mm -hmm. The same thing happened with Donald Trump. And what's happened is that this has just basically been used as now as an excuse 
And okay, I'm I'm not I'm I'm not condoning it. I understand, but you know, okay, it what he did was completely against what we should have been doing at the time. However, I do think it's a bit of a witch hunt, and I do think it's a bit of a using it as an excuse to try and get him out. And uh, you know, the, the point is, I think what people are kind of overlooking is when he goes, when he when he resigns, who who takes over? I don't know. You know, and take your pick. And this is you know, this is the thing. It's you know, it's our economy, yeah. And, and like so many have said, you know, we're, we're about to embark on, you know, we're, we're about to be kind of a, a, a dictator on our, on our doorstep, uh, attacking a, 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 you know, a European country. And instead of dealing, you know, instead of working out what we're doing, you know, you look at Keir Starmer. I mean, I, I haven't really heard him say much at all about the U- U- Ukraine issue. He, he's spending all his time talking he wrote about... A big pe- no, no, no. He, he wrote a, an, a, an op-ed in the Telegraph on Saturday, having met with the Ukrainian ambassador. Uh, so, I mean, it's, it's only because you haven't seen it, it. I guess in which case it sums up then how what what where the media attention is lying then in terms of us, like you said, with the front pages and everything else. It's, but Jonathan, you know, I, I, you, you, so that it's the media's fault that Johnson has lied and dissembled about the parties that actually he did have and attend and know to, knew about. It's the media's fault for pointing out and telling people, showing people that the Downing Street operation attempted to. Uh, stonewall and cover up these these stories. I I don't think that he is as bad as people make out. I think genuinely, as we've seen over the pandemic, I think he was desperately trying to do the best within his power to to get us out of this out of this situation. And you know, we look at ourselves now. We're we're probably one of the most we're, we're probably one of the best countries. You know, in terms of COVID, mm-hmm. uh, you know, in, across the world, and and you know. I, I just think we need to, to, to have a sense of proportion and balance with with all of this. I understand what he did was wrong, but equally, you know, I, I, I he did a lot. He did a lot good as well, and I, I think people forget that. And you know, when you're when you're having the when you've got the, the country on your shoulders, you know, you don't know what to do. you you're, you're trying to. You know, you've got 101 different opinions being thrown at you. You've got to make the right call. Damn, I bet that's stressful. And, you know, oh, it's, if, it's Jonathan, their team but, of, you know... Yes, it is very stressful. If he wanted an easy ride, he wouldn't have chosen to be Prime Minister. He wouldn't have chosen to put himself forward for that job. He wouldn't have chosen... Well, I don't uh, think anyone would have signed up to having a global pandemic. I mean, he, he, was, no, he no, wasn't expecting no, that, was he? No, 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 but you don't get a choice to, exp- to, to decide what events you deal with as Prime Minister. Hang on the line. Simon's in Southampton. Simon. Hi. What do you make of what Jonathan's saying? Get on, move Jonathan. on, get on with it. He's, he's done Jonathan. a good job. Jonathan, how you doing? All right. Hi, are you all right? Yeah, I'm all right, mate. Listen, I've got to say something to you, right? Because I'm close to tears here listening to what you're saying. You're either looking for a job as a Tory MP because you're talking like the, the sycophants, or you seriously have something missing in your grey matter. How the hell can you honestly think the things you are saying? Have you actually stopped and listened to yourself? You're talking about a man who thinks that you, Jonathan, are nothing better than scum. He's punching you in the face and then waiting for you to say thank you to him. And how can you expect a man who has done what he's done to this country, who has done what he's done to the people of this country, who has done what he's done to Brexit, who has done what he's done to the pandemic, to have a sensible, balanced, level-headed, statesmanlike approach to a possible war situation. Because if you can answer that and say that you believe that, that you think that he can, there is seriously something wrong with you. All right, Jonathan? He's had a few part. Okay, look, I'm going to say I'm not condoning the parties, but at the end of the day, you know, it's not we, about the we, party. We, Tom, it's not about we, the party, Jonathan. What's it about? It's what's it about got then? Nothing to do with the parties. It could have been a trip to the zoo. The point is this: he passed laws that said that you could not sit with your dying loved ones, and then he went and had parties, gatherings with people. He said that black and white was the opposite way around because it suited his narrative. He's making you, he's taking you for a complete and utter fool. And you said, one of the things you said was how hard he's worked. It's a stressful job. How stressful? 
stressful is his job compared to sitting next to somebody who and, and watching them on uh, an iPad even. I'm getting my words mixed up now because of the rage. How how much more difficult is it to do what he's doing and then sit, compare that to somebody sitting, watching an iPad, their loved one dying in front of them? Jonathan? Yeah, I mean, it, uh, again, I, I totally, totally respect what you're saying. I, I just think that, you know, when you've got so many people coming at you, trying to, you've got to try and do what's right. You're trying to balance out what is going to basically bring the economy to its knees or to, to kind of live, you know, get through a pandemic. We, we didn't know at the time how serious this thing was going to be. You know, he, the, the guy at your Westminster was its own bubble at that point. You know, these no, guys were, they were working together no, in their own offices. It wasn't yeah, its Downing own Street bubble. Street was its own bubble. No, but it they, were work, they, they were working together in the same offices. Yes, but so were you nurses know. and doctors and teachers and firefighters and police. I, I go back to my original point that these people had to, you know, they, they had to come together. They were working 15, 17, mm-hmm. 18 hours a day, mm-hmm. what have you. Um, to try and to try and get this country out of the pandemic, mm-hmm. things were shifting day by day by day. Yes, you know, they, they, normally they were shifting them, <laughs> particularly the rules. Yeah, because they didn't know, because they were being told by all these doctors and scientists. One day it was one thing, one day it was another. They were having to change day by day because of the statistics. It's amazing. Jonathan, listen, I appreciate the, the defence that you've offered. I, I think it's full of holes and, and largely risible. But I'm, I appreciate the, the effort that you made. Simon, thank you to you as well. 03456060973. Rasheen is a new caller in Sudbury. Hi, Rasheen. Hello. 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 Um, yes, it is my first call, so you'll have to excuse any <laughs> nervousness. Well, Rasheen, if, listen- if that were the, uh, if it, excusing nervousness were part of the problem, then I'd apologise at the start of every programme, so please okay, don't be nervous. Okay, but I've been listening to your conversation um, with Jonathan particularly, but I heard the two um, letters beforehand, which yeah. both were trying to put the party gate into perspective. And I was quite relieved to hear that because um, it is a very one-sided thing on your sort of programmes and on um, BBC as well. I think Mm. you'd probably have to admit. And whereas you picked Jonathan up for saying um, it was a campaign by the left-wing media... Mm -hmm. I would agree with you that it's not just left-wing media, but I think you could say that it probably was a campaign by unreconciled Remainers, old enemies of Boris. There is a history behind um, the whole um, party gate um, you know, um, outcry. Unreconciled if, Remainers. Sorry, can I just say one more? Yeah, yeah, if, you, if you actually put... Um, the comparisons of having a party or a drink or whatever it is you're saying with the things that you compare it with, I I would see some side to your argument. But you say, while we were all more or less locked at home, denied from seeing our loved ones, denied from doing this, denied from doing that, they were all partying. If you would actually say that the rules they they were breaking were going to see their loved ones, going to see their friends in hospital, going to do all the things that you say we weren't allowed to do, yes. then there would be some equivalence. But you're not saying that. Well, Ro- saying, Rasheen, sorry, I was, sorry. Not, I was not allowed. You don't, you don't even need to do the friends in hospital or the dying relatives. I was not allowed by the law to go and have a party with but 30 or more that's people. Not, that's not what the media are asked. That's not what all your telephone people are ringing up about. None of them are complaining about not having a party. They're all complaining about not being able to see their loved ones, yes, not being because... able to do this. They're putting heart-rending yes. stories, which you're milking to the sort of utmost, and then comparing it with um, the drinks parties, which weren't endless and going on all the time. Rashid, and the Rashid, Ukraine sorry. business, sorry. for <laughs> heaven's sake, is, you know, is Putin going to be at the gates of Paris or something before you stop talking about party gate and actually look at other events in the world? Well, Rashid, where it were you for the last hour? 
<laughs> Sorry. <laughs> We've just spent we spent an hour of the programme talking about that exact issue because it is such a massive, massive problem. You're right. Well, I don't, I don't get that impression. I get the impression you're more interested in Partygate first. Well, I mean, why go back to Partygate after having talked about that? Because the future that? of the Prime Minister is really important. In, if, if nothing else, in, in possibly informing this country's response to the situation on the U Ukraine-Russian border. But you're implying that while all these things are happening, if the Boris has more or less been at a, in a palm, permanent party... No, I've, I've not suggested that. Is, I've not said and that the at last all. Thing, sorry, uh, well, I'm, I'm, I mean, I did get sort of very annoyed about it because it seems extraordinary for a year you... And um, all your a lot of your colleagues on mm -hmm. LBC, certainly the BBC, were really saying that Dominic Cummings was really sort of a well, you, he was a pariah to you. And now suddenly you're all racing after every little crumb of information that he drops, and you know, and it's Dominic Cummings who's feeding you all. And yet this time last year. Dominic Cummings, you thought was sort of, you know, sort of almost unmentionable. And it does seem she, like why you, why you, you really like the old thing in um, Private Eye when they used to have the press was, don't you love them, don't you hate them, that you change, you know, from minute to minute on, uh, you know, on your outrage. Sorry. Not you only, but you did call that man Donathan. You said his arguments were risible and yes. wrong. Yes. You used those words. I, and I, yes, I did, because that's you what thought I thought. You thought they were risible and wrong. So I'm just trying to tell you why I don't think he was risible and wrong and why sometimes you're wrong. Rushing, <laughs> did these events happen? What? Did, it, did these events well, what happen? What events are you talking about? I mean, say he did only go for 10 minutes, and say they did come. Were they causing people? They didn't cause the people to die in hospital. Mm -hmm. They didn't cause you not to mm -hmm. see. You didn't go and see your parents and things. Well, I, 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 sorry, I didn't, I didn't go and see my parents and things because that particular individual... Uh, the Prime Minister told me, put in law that I couldn't. I don't mean you couldn't. particularly, I no, mean no, but, one... But the point, that, Rasheen, the point is, I, I, I take your point about the elements of the media flip-flopping over whether they appreciate Dominic Cummings one day or don't the next. Uh, for what it's worth, I have no opinion of Dominic Cummings, I've never met the bloke. No. But what is happening here is true. The information that is coming out, turns out, is true. And part of the reason why this story is important, or these sets of stories is important, is not because the cake is more important than Ukraine-Russia, or that it's more important than the conversations that Biden and Johnson are having at the moment about what to do about it. To me, it's the lying. Downing Street knew that these events took place, and for months told us that no rules have been broken, no parties But it didn't happened. stop them getting the vaccine rollout. It didn't stop, it, it, it's not stop, the stop point. them doing all the important things that a government's meant to be doing. It's if it had, because they'd all been so busy drinking and having a party, So why should any of the enough. rules... Why should, hang on. Stop. Why should I mean, any of the rules have applied to any of them at any moment? If all they're judged by is... What did they do to try and bring the pandemic to a conclusion? Why have any rules for them? But, I mean, because they've obeyed... They, none of them have... I don't know, I don't know, but no, none of them have actually disobeyed the really serious rules. Hang on, but these, these non-serious rules prevented me and you and everybody else from being able to have a gathering indoors, a social gathering yeah, indoors. Yeah, but we wouldn't have been doing that every day and every week and No, I don't, want, I don't want my birthday every day. It'd be agony, it'd be exhausting. I, but, but I did want to have my birthday party and a celebration with my family and friends in my house with some drinks and some, some well, cake and what have you. Well, he went to the party, he looked why can't, in at why the couldn't party I do that? for ten minutes. But why can I do that? I want to do that. Well, why you, I, I, why am I not, not allowed? Done, and did you not do anything for ten minutes during the, all those months of the broad of the um, lockdown? No. Can you tell me that most journalists? I was. I'm married to a journalist. Can you tell me that they haven't? Because you know, I don't believe you actually. Right. I don't believe that you don't know that none of your friends or your colleagues... Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure some of them may have LBC broken the rules. Yeah. ...have had a drink or spent ten minutes during lockdown at work... 
talking to people I, I, and I don't three know. of you in the room or whatever. I, listen, I don't know. But what I would say is, if those people were asked, did you break the rules, I would expect them to be honest. And here we have a clear case where Downing Street and the Prime Minister, when asked, did you do this, said no, 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 until they were proven to be lying about well, it. Well, what have they been proved to have done? What do you mean? Well, the report hasn't come out yet. What well, the would you do Sorry, the Prime Minister... The report, sorry, no, 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 no. The Prime Minister on the record said... I attended the drinks party on May the 20th and wandered for around for, 20, for 25 minutes. For 25 minutes, went to a but social gathering outside for, for 30 Dominic people. Cummings wrote, Dominic Cummings wrote that that year, from April onwards, everybody in Downing Street had been encouraged to have meetings in the garden. But, and that Rasheen, there were it wasn't a meeting. meetings in the garden. What meeting do you go to with booze? That was a blog that... Um, I, I know, but what meetings do you attend where there is booze? But you don't know there was booze at every meeting. I, I'm not saying every meeting. That meeting, where the Prime Minister attended for 25 minutes with glasses of wine and gin and tonics and what have you, that meeting wasn't a meeting. <laughs> he, you, you're confusing the one when they went out with a suitcase, which he wasn't there at, at all. He no, 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 that's checkers. the Christmas one. The May the 20th one, where the invite was sent round saying, let's make the most of the nice weather. That wasn't a work event, was it? Was that the farewell party? No, nope, that was a party no, that was, that was there party. to enjoy the weather. Oh, God, what a crime. What do you mean? I mean, what, what, what was Keir, Keir, Keir Starmer no, doing? No, 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 don't know. Their people just came in with... A, I don't blame Keir Starmer having a lunch and a pint of beer when he's working on... Most people don't blame him. Rasheen? Do you know there are loads and loads and loads God. of people who take the same attitude as me and say, a drinks party, you'll bring a government down, you'll get rid of a prime Rasheen, minister. Rasheen, the point really, is... The, the point... You really would get oh rid God, of Boris missed. Johnson it's been because missed. for 25 minutes, he, he really would. Do you not see the, hip, the hypocrisy at the heart here? I see Do you not your see hypocrisy. Mine? <laughs> yes. Why? Because you're comparing the most ridiculous things. What do you, I'm comparing what the fact you, that I wasn't allowed to have the events that Boris Johnson now turns out what, did go you, to. You, you, you begrudge a 25 minute thanking of stuff. In an environment you where I was not. In an environment. Minute. Sorry, no, no, no. In an environment where tens of millions of people were told by the law that they couldn't do that thing, they yes, were told they I couldn't begrudge go it. To big parties, or they couldn't have. They were told they I'm, couldn't see another person. But your uh, indignation is faux or false. You're not really. I. I mean, how indignant would you be if I said that he'd murdered somebody? You wouldn't be able to be indignant because you you've mean? used all your indignancy about indignation. Sorry about him. Um, well, how much a, how much indignation do you know I have? Are you, uh, are, you, are you aware of my store of indignation? Well, you must. You mean you've got more? Uh, if the prime minister murdered someone, you bet. I know you've got. Are you a journalist? You've got to fill in your space. You've got to be able to oh, don't talk, be ridiculous. and you just do. Don't be ridiculous. And you ridiculous. and people like James O'Brien and stuff like that fill the airways with your thoughts. But you have. I mean, you have. You're very indulged in your job. What do you mean? Well, I mean, we have, people pay you to listen to you. Talking. I know. It's amazing. I can't believe either. <laughs> I, no, no, I'm a gob on a stick, don't get me wrong. I, I wake up every day and think, my God, how lucky am I to be doing this? So, no, I, you're, in, that, in that regard, you're absolutely right. I don't see what that has got to do with Boris Johnson no, no, and I the dissembling and the lying about yeah, parties. I, but you, don't you even admit that the comparisons, that the lists of things that we were all doing... I mean, Boris Johnson... I mean, I don't know if he had any loved ones in hospital, but all the peop those people were not seeing their loved ones in hospital. They weren't no. doing things out of work. They weren't going to parties at the weekend. Boris Johnson actually lives in Downing Street. Mm -hmm. That's why the person came down. You know, I know lots of people who work at home, and, okay, and Rasheen, if listen, somebody I, comes really down sorry. and says about the wallpaper to them, <sighs> they answer a question. Yes, but they're not the bloody Prime Minister in the middle of a pandemic, are they? 
Now, I'm really sorry, but it is absolutely ludicrous that the Prime Minister of the country has to answer questions from the person putting up the wallpaper in their flat during a time when they're meant to be running the country. Find someone else to do it. Ask the assistant. Ask the, your wife about the questions about the wallpaper if you really want to. The idea that you stride into the Cabinet room and sort of go, I'm so sorry, Prime Minister, I don't know whether you wanted red or blue on this part of the wall, is ludicrous. It's a joke. Rasheen, thank you. Carl's in acting. Carl, what does it mean? James, how you doing? Good, thanks. Good, good. Yeah, I'm anti-woke. Excellent. Is it in your Twitter profile? I don't have Twitter. I've got Instagram, but right. it's in my Instagram What does it profile. mean? What does it mean? Well, what does it mean to me? People have different um, interpretations of anti-woke or wokenism. Uh, to me, it means people who seek offence where it doesn't exist. They look for the tiniest little thing and pin on it and... But everyone you know, would be anti that, wouldn't they? No, it's, it's a bit like driving in a bus lane, but not your full car's not in the bus lane, it's just one wheel that's in the bus lane. Mm, you've lost um, me now. To, so, so being... Uh, so, so someone someone, someone who's, who's hypersensitive and pedantic, is, is that's annoying and boring for everybody. Maybe we should work yeah. in examples. So when you come across... When, when, when and where do you come across the sort of wokeness to which you are so passionately opposed? Well, apart I from in the bus lane. In... Apart from in the bus lane. <laughs> I used to work in local authority. I'm, I'm now self-employed. But when I worked in local authority, you didn't get on with your work. There was a few hours a week dedicated to these sort of woke agendas. Yeah, go on. Um, you know, going on these sort of courses um, and these internal training courses and... Well, like what, though? Very, what, were the, what were they it teaching It was all you? very insincere. Well, you might have been. You can't speak for anybody else. No, but the, the So what were they teaching you? What, 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 so these trainers... What sort of would, courses? Would hold, these trainers would hold these courses. Yeah. And... You know, they're being... I know how much they're paid. They're paid an absolute fortune, and they read... That's not anti-work, mate. That's just envy. So what were the courses? What were they What were they designed to do? Well, I'm very envious. I know you are, but, but what were the courses <laughs> designed to do? What were they training you to do? What were, what were they doing? Uh, I think they were designed to stifle rational discussion and debate. Well, they put that on the agenda. They put that on the door, did they? No, but that was... So the what, were they, what were they designed to do? What, what sort of courses are we well, talking I just about? Said, Am I in an echo chamber? Well, clearly not, mate, no. Do you know what that means? <laughs> no, I don't, but no. you're going to tell so me. So what were the courses officially designed to do? Right. So we'd go on these courses yeah. and you'd all be in a room and it would be some topical discussion. Oh, God. Down with that sort about, of thing. About something that's happened lately. <laughs> so what would happen... It's awful, isn't lately? it? So, so what would happen... Yeah. The, the, the powers that be would say, oh, we better, you know, this has happened in America. Right. We better send everyone on a course. For example? I don't want to quote examples, really. You kind of have to. I can't, because then well, you'll get everyone... That's the point, isn't it, though? So something that actually happened. That's all. Well, you bring one, bring one up, and I'll give you. I'll plan no, 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 because you're telling me what it means. Go on. And the, the example is these courses that you went on, and the rooms that you sat in, and the and the speeches that you listened to. So, just tell me what they were about. Let me think of one. Uh... Take, take your time. Still there? Yeah. Oh, good. Um, well, let's say, for example. A, um, you know, preventing barriers to staff progression. So people from certain religions, cultures, races, etc. But you were going to give me an example of something that had happened in America. Yeah, so that, that that's yeah. happened. No, no, I was just, I won't bring that up. I think. Well, why not? Why don't you bring that up? Because I think most of your listeners know what I'm referring to. I have not got a clue. Okay. So tell, tell us. Just keep an eye on the tape, the, the emergency tape that kicks in when we have periods of silence that, that, that go over. <laughs> a, a, so just tell us. Everybody already knows, Carl. So just tell us what it is you object to having courses on when you worked at a local authority. Well, I just think it's really insincere. Yeah, but we can't really know what that means until you tell us what it was, can you? 
Mm. So what 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 was it, mate? Things I'm a bit scared to go down the rabbit hole. You, just just to be clear, you didn't. Just to be clear, you didn't ring in. You didn't. You didn't ring something. in by accident, did you? No, of course not. No. So you rang in to answer a question about what anti... I, I am yeah, anti-woke, so you, you said. said what, so what, yeah, what does that mean? Said, and you said, it, here are some said, examples. And I said, just name one. And you said, what does it mean to you? So yeah. what does it mean to me? Yeah. It means to me people that actively seek offence where it doesn't exist. Yeah, so what were the courses? Well, various courses. Yeah, so God, just give me one example, on, then. Well, preventing staff progression. Um, you know, people... What do you think that means? Well, just stop them progressing in their career. So they were teaching you how to stop progressing in your career? Not me, personally. I sus suspect you didn't need any lessons. No, I, I didn't. I went to work to work. Yeah. I didn't go into so work what, to what, what, what were you to taught behave to... and be nice. Oh, so these and were courses is... encouraging people to behave and be nice that you object to. That's what you mean by woke. That's what all my other callers have already no, I said. Think, I think we learn this when we grow up. Well, some of you us know, do. I grew up in London. Well, you're I, very I, lucky. I you're already London. very nice and well-behaved. What about people who aren't? Surely they'd benefit from these courses, Carl. Well, you know, they, they are the ones that should be marginalised. But why do people look... You want to so marginalise people now? Isn't that woke? You want to marginalise people who aren't very nice? That's what everyone else has told me is woke. No, I want... The people that are nasty and horrible... Yeah. Get, yeah, marginalise them. Get rid but of that's them. that's woke, though. Wrong. That's what woke but means. You're pro-woke, mate. You're not anti-woke. Your council tax shouldn't pay to send me on a day course. Well, what you need to tell me what your the course was. What's the course? Pay for your bins to be collected. You, you, on the contrary, I want I want local authorities to to be run in a way that is forward thinking and progressive. And if some people, not you, because you don't need these courses, but if some people are, are holding back the rest of the organisation, then I think giving them some training is a wonderful idea. Go on, just tell everyone the thing that they already know that you're talking about but you're not prepared to say out loud. Because otherwise people getting... might think you're a bit woke. You're frightened of causing offence, are you? Isn't that what woke means? I've been... I have been cowed into silence by your lot. N no, mate, you have tied yourself in knots single-handedly. I've been cowed into silence. You know who you are. It's right. your curtain twitches. It's oh. your ones that okay. look out of their window. And look for a fence where it doesn't exist. At what point in this conversation do you think you lost the Are plot completely? Are you on nextdoor.com, James? Are you on nextdoor.com? Listen, I, I'm, I'm very happily married, Carl. So, no, you know nextdoor.com. It's a society Carl, I'm very, website. I'm, mate, I'm very happily married. Let's not go weird. Final chance... Are you no, going to no, give no, me an no, example no, 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 of something that is woke, or are we just going to wave goodbye to each other and, and fill in the gaps for ourselves? I'll let you fill in the gaps. Now, you see, I, I've got a horrible feeling that you've done the polar opposite of what you rang in to do, and you've proved all the previous callers completely right. But, you know, good luck to you. Please don't misquote me on my own programme. I did not say that Sue Gray said the Prime Minister was at every single one of these parties. There are that many one can get confused. What I did say is that the Prime Minister has presided over a number 10, where we now know that there were so many parties that there's different investigations in one bit of Sue Gray's report to the Metropolitan Police. So I ask you again, how can people trust the Prime Minister to follow the rules he sets when around him, those he's meant to be in charge of, are having parties that, as you say, to go back to your original point, as you put it, flout the spirit of the guidance? Because the Prime Minister has recognised the fact that Number 10 has, uh, you know, has, has built up this culture that, that needs tackling this country, bearing in mind, of course, the Prime Minister himself, just a few weeks before some of these events that we're talking about, nearly died of COVID himself. Are you, really the going, to, sorry, sorry, um, are you really going to use the fact that the Prime Minister nearly died and other personal events in his life to justify the fact that he either didn't understand the rules or noticed that people all around him where he lived and worked were partying. What I'm saying is that if I came off my deathbed from COVID, I think I would have a pretty good handle on um, the, the, the need to abide by the rules. Clearly there was a failing here, that's why he's apologised, and it's, it's right that he tackles that. So, uh, so, so we, we do need to make sure that we can move forward on to tackling the issues that people want to talk about. So, the, but what the, you've the, just the, said the, directly the contradicts living, itself. The, 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 no, 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 the, the sorry. The cost of living, the, 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 the war, speak. the possible that is, that, war what, in Russia and in, in Ukraine. 
All of these issues, all of these issues are really, really important. So we do want to address this. Sorry, but we cannot spend two hours in Parliament. We cannot spend the entire uh, entirety of your programme talking about this while the government are doing many other things. You at don't the same get to time. edit Newsnight. I, I asked you a question about the fact that you were using that he nearly died of COVID to talk about the rules. You just said he should therefore have abided by the rules. That's exactly what people have been saying. How could there have been parties? How could there have been parties with a man who nearly lost his life to COVID? Finally tonight, we don't usually give story tips to NPR, but here's a story they might want to cover pretty soon and doubtless will. M&M's, the candy company, has just announced that it's redesigning its cartoon characters to be more gender inclusive. Bet you didn't think M&M's were pushing intolerance, but they were. They've been changed. You're seeing the changes right now on your screen. The green M&M, you will notice, is no longer wearing sexy boots. Now she's wearing sensible sneakers. Why the change? Well, according to M&M's, quote, we all win when we see more women in leading roles because leading women do not wear sexy boots. Leading women wear frumpy shoes. The frumpier, the better. That's the rule. The other big change is that the brown M&M has, quote, transitioned from high stilettos to lower block heels. Also less sexy. That's progress. M&Ms will not be satisfied until every last cartoon character is deeply unappealing and totally androgynous. Until the moment you wouldn't want to have a drink with any one of them. That's the goal. When you're totally turned off, we've achieved equity. They've won. Meanwhile, in a nod to the burgeoning wellness movement, the orange M&M will, quote, acknowledge and embrace his anxiety. And actually, if you look at him, the orange M&M does appear very anxious. Maybe he doesn't like all the ugly new shoes he sees around him. Maybe he liked the sexy boots. Maybe the orange M&M is a secret sexist himself. We don't know. We're going to let NPR get to the bottom of that. Bye now, please, no more.